Thank you all for joining us for season one of the Sunday Staff Debrief presented by Utility Dive Center. We hope you join us for next season. We've had an absolute blast filming and hope you've enjoyed watching at home. Uh, stay tuned for next season where we're going to make some changes and hopefully we'll see you all soon. Even though this is the last episode of our season, next week we have a little gift for you of bloopers and outtakes. So stay tuned. Welcome everyone to the Sunday Staff Debrief, where every week we chat about various diving topics. I'm your host, Nicole, and as always, joined by our panel, Juicy and Rich. And this week, our special guest is here to chat with us about what it takes to become a dive professional at a world-class dive center. UDC's very own PADI staff instructor, Claire Babby. Welcome, Hello. Claire. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Why did you get into diving? Sure. Um, so I've been diving for about a decade now. I started diving when I was 12, did the open water thing, decided to come to UDC to get my dive master. Started advanced to dive master here. It was wonderful. I had a lot of amazing mentors um, throughout my time here and I decided kind of last minute to do my instructor. I loved my time here and I wanted it to keep going. So I did my instructor, left for a little bit, couldn't stay away, so came back, uh, completed my MSDT, uh, worked for a while and then got my staff instructor. So just going on to the next thing because I couldn't stop learning. Now Claire, you do not have nearly as much life experience as Juicy and Rich here, <laughs> but you've done quite a bit in a short amount of time professionally. What was that journey like for you? So when I first started out, um, I was really mostly focused on becoming a better diver. So it was a lot of fun diving and just going out and practicing my skills. As I made the transition over to a working diver, it was about learning as much as I possibly could. So I was still focusing on that fun, but it was a lot of hard work in order to become not only a better diver, but to learn more skills, to become more experienced with every aspect of a dive shop, anything I could really get my hands on. And how was the transition between being a recreational diver and a professional diver for you? Was it easy, hard? It felt pretty natural. After a while, you're starting to really want to do more. Fun dives are always great, but after a while you want to see something new and you want to learn how to do something new. So maybe you want to learn how to take a side mount course or you want to learn how to blend your own gas. Things like that make diving a lot more rewarding for me. Now, the dive industry is very competitive. Did any of you expect to get a job here at UDC? I would have to say no, not at all. Um, when I came in 2009, I did my dive master. I didn't think that I would ever work at UDC. I came here to train here because of the reputation the place had, um, because of the instructors that were here at the time that I had communicated with prior to arriving that really alleviated my concerns about whether this was a professional place, whether this place was legit. I remember my dad being like, is it even a real place? Are they just going to steal your money? Um, I said, yeah, there's a guy on YouTube with a video about it. It's got to be real. Um, so I didn't ever expect to work at UDC. I, I came here and I did my training and I tried to separate myself through hard work. I didn't speak five languages. Um, I didn't have you know, web design skills or I wasn't able to drive a boat or fix a compressor or anything like that. Um, I just loved scuba diving. I loved hanging around by the ocean and so I came and I said you know if I'm gonna get hired here or have an opportunity to work here then I'm gonna have to work harder than everybody else and that was the, the, the thing I used to get into the dive industry. Mm -hmm. What about you Rich? Um, I was already a you know, relatively experienced instructor by the time I come to UDC, its reputation had preceded itself. Uh, and because of that, absolutely, I'm not, I did not expect to get a job here. I came to Utila to find work, but I didn't necessarily think it would be at UDC. Uh, I came to, to audit um, uh, an IDC uh, with Juice, actually. And again, through basically just working as hard as I possibly could, if there was anything needed to be doing, I'd be there doing it be there early, take some initiative and, and try as hard as you can to do all of the things that get you noticed. Um, and then and then through there, yeah, there's always discussions about, you know, what can you join the team, where do you fit in and things like that. 
uh, but I definitely didn't expect to, to be given a job. No, definitely not. Hard work pays off, right? <laughs> I would expand on what Rich says to the point that he's, he said um, he'd, he hadn't done a lot of training here, but he knew about the reputation. And when Rich showed up, he had a fantastic attitude. We talk about this and it seems a bit cliche and you think, oh yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, Rich came and really proved to us in, in two weeks of auditing in IDC that he was cut from a bit of the same fabric as the UDC staff and that he was very standard oriented. He was cared a lot about Patty's standards, very attention to detail with regards to safety, uh, fantastic salesmanship, all really good characteristics that keeps you going in the dive industry. And so it was really easy for, for Rich to walk in. I mean, obviously that was, dependent on his vast experience that he had before he came here. If he was just out of an IDC, I don't think he would have been as successful, certainly not in that position, but he, he really proved himself through attitude, hard work, salesmanship, um, and those, those traits go a long way. Mm -hmm. And Claire, what about you? Um, I had definitely always wanted a job at UDC. From when I was doing my dive master here, it was something that I was interested in, but I did not think I had much of a chance. Uh, when I came back to do my MSDT, I made it my priority to always just be here. Kind of like what Rich was saying, just being around, showing how much you love being at the dive shop, being available to do really anything anyone asks of you, assist on courses, um, help out in the office, anything like that. And I also begged Nico mercilessly for months for a job. And eventually he gave it to me. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> And Juicy, working with Claire, um, what has made her stand out the most to you? Um, I think one of the things that I see the most is Claire's students are really attentive to her due to her passion for teaching as well as the marine environment and the ocean. Um, and also they have a lot of fun. Um, they enjoy themselves when she's teaching. They learn a lot. She's, uh, like I said, attention to detail, very thorough and her students leave the class knowing, being very, very clearly aware, even with their very little experience in scuba diving, that they received a fantastic education. She's enthusiastic about everything and willing to learn in the areas that you know everyone needs to brush up on, everyone needs to, to improve in some areas, and in those areas that she's identified for her to learn, she's always asking questions, so that's nice. Now, Juicy and Rich, what are some of the differences that you've seen in your career paths versus Claire's? I think there's several similarities. Like Claire said, she came to, to UDC and started a lot of her pref professional training. I did the same thing um, and worked here for a few years unexpectedly, as, as you had said. You know, no, I don't think anyone ever walks in the door and thinks, I'm going to work here. It's quite a competitive place, and a lot of people come through the door that have the opportunity to work here. Um, and then I moved on and worked in different locations of the world. I kind of stepped more into the resort management side of things and started working in places in Fiji and Indonesia and Africa where it wasn't a dive training facility with you know uh, five boats going out every day and lots of classes going on and from open water to, to MSDT or even tech diving. Um, it was more of a resort style environment where you know taking, mm -hmm. taking six yeah. or eight people diving each day and showing them cool stuff and things like that. Occasional course here, occasional DFD there. Um, I liked both sides of the coin, honestly. I learned a lot about hospitality, about hotel management, about things that I couldn't have learned about here, um, which was nice and it was a lot of it was high-end stuff so it was, you know, beyond my, my world of recognition, so to speak. Um, but I appreciated that part of my education in the industry, and I think that helps me now, even though I don't work in that environment anymore. Um, being in, an, in a place like Utila, seeing that flip side of the coin has definitely made me more well-rounded manager and instructor and um, more aware of just everything, that the opportunities in the, in the scuba diving industry, which are incredible. Yeah, I mean, my story is relatively similar as, as Juice. I, I, I did my dive master training in a career development center, which is focused entirely on professional training. Um, my IDC, a very similar place. There was a different arm to it with its dive club and free diving aspect as well. Um, and then I moved around the world. And I, again, like Juice, worked in more resort type environments. So uh, in Fiji and Mexico um, and the Philippines, it was more... Um, just diving, you know, taking people diving. There was the odd course here or there, but it wasn't the focus of what was going on. It was more about taking people to go and see uh, bull sharks and tiger sharks in Fiji or, or yeah, seeing the experience. The... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, you, you, were, you were setting up gear for everybody, welcoming you were, you know, the, the, the one person doing everything around the shop. So um, that's one thing you learn a lot about the customer satisfaction side of things. Uh, but what it really helped me do is focus on the fact that I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to go back to the 
um, to the teaching side of things, the career development section. So I went back to the shop where I had trained as a dive master. I was fortunate enough to be given a job there. But six months later, I moved to a shop uh, called Scuba Junction, now 56 Diving, and they gave me my big break really in diving. That's where um, I was invited to help uh, develop and, and restructure the dive master program with, uh, with my old friend, uh, Rich Westwood. And we spent, I spent 18 months there or, or thereabouts um, rebuilding that program. And then it was time for me to, to move on and onto newer things. So the mine was a little more convoluted, but what it allowed me to do was to see what I wanted to do but I've also, like Juicy, experienced different parts of the industry, knowing then that my passion is teaching and that's really where I want it to be. And ended up in a place like this, which is a, you know, a, a hyper-focused on, on its career development and its courses, but also has the, the resort arm as well. We have the resort boat every day, uh, in which they take the, the, the divers to the best sites uh, every single day and they go diving with some amazing guides who can see things that, even if you pointed it right in front of my face, I'll never see. Um, so we have a bit of both here, but it certainly helped me to be in that, 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 that environment. I think for everyone uh, in the dive industry, you get to a, you come to a point, hopefully, if you, mm -hmm. if you stick it out long enough, yeah, yeah. where you find where you belong, right? Some people are scientists and want to deal in conservation. Some people are photographers that want to take pictures and, and show, take pictures of other people. Some people want to teach. Some people want to guide. And, and I found that, I think, when I moved to Fiji and was working there. One of my colleagues, Sabine, she was a photographer and an incredible dive guide, but she wasn't too keen on teaching and we played off each other well because I love to teach so whenever someone came into the, the dive center resort like I want to do a DST I want to learn this yeah. she's like that's your guy if you just want to go diving and she's going to show you a million cool things and take pictures of stuff then that was her thing and we all kind of fall into our little niche whether it's tech diving conservation photography um, and all the other multitude of things we can do in this industry that keep people interested and I think that's that's the cool part about it right when you find that place for you that's when you kind of feel complete and that's what makes a good, well-rounded team as well. Absolutely. <laughs> and Claire, you have obviously have set the bar pretty high for yourself um, <laughs> here at UDC. Where, where do you see yourself um, taking your dive career in the future? I've always been a sucker for an open water course because I love to see people see the water for the first time. And I think that that's pushing me towards maybe going into more of a technical realm. Because while they're completely opposite, it's still someone seeing something for the first time and me wanting to see something new for the first time. Maybe go a little bit deeper, learn something new about equipment. Um, so I see myself going that way soon. I would also love to start working on uh, instructor development courses and being able to teach new instructors. Same thing about building the passion for diving and building the passion for the sport and the job brings me a lot of happiness to see. Great. It's amazing. Thank you all for joining this week's episode of the Sunday Staff Debrief. As always, thank you to our panel and thank you to our very special guest this week, Claire. And as always, remember to help us grow our channel by liking the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. We will not be seeing you all next week. That's cute. <laughs> you will not be seeing this. So, um, stay where you are for a second. Don't everyone get up and. Oh my God, don't fuck up if I die. I'm 